Brother Black. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I think we should be live everywhere. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we back. A hurricane can't stop this show. Mr. Lee in the meeting. TP is in the building. Marlo, Mr. Bet Your Eyebrows is in the building. And me, we need a new coach, is in the building. Shout out to Hendricks GM uh, for sponsoring this podcast. Oh, we had we we had a rough little rough little couple weeks, or well, really one week. Um, we had a hurricane blow through, uh, missed the Bay Area, but absolutely ravaged Fort Myers, Punta Gorda area. Um, our prayers go out uh, to everyone affected by that. Um, the president was down there this week. Uh, the governor was down there this week. So let's hopefully we can get them some aid. Um, it's not going to be a quick process. That's an old community um, built on a barrier island. So it's not going to be a, a, a quick turnaround, but let's hope we can get through this as fast as possible. One of the things that we um, we, we missed out on while we was gone um, was the tour concussion situation. And to catch everybody up, uh, Tua on a Thursday night game, or I'm sorry, on a Sunday game, had what was quote unquote a back injury. However, he was stumbling around like he had been in a fight with Roy Jones Jr. Um, they took him in the locker room, they said he had a back injury, and they put him back in the game. Then on that Thursday night, he got smacked against Cincinnati. It wasn't no debate on whether or not he had a concussion. He, he got smacked around. And um, the researcher who found CTE as an actual diagnosis um, from too many concussions has stated that maybe Tua should retire because he's had a life-altering brain damage that has happened to him in the last two weeks. Um, and it's been some uproar. Players Association got involved. Uh, some doctors, were, or a doctor was fired. Not sure why a GM or coach wasn't fired. But that, that happened. TP? We take protecting the quarterback serious in the NFL for a reason. Time and time again, we see where somebody gets hit and it's not a concussion, right? We, as viewers, we can tell that somebody just had something traumatic happen in the head area by the way that they react once they get up. From a person who's had multiple concussions while playing football, it doesn't take much to get a concussion. I probably played and finished games with a concussion because nine times out of ten, my head would be ringing at the end of the day. My coach used to tell us, if your head ain't ringing, you must ain't hit nobody. Later we found out we probably, half of us probably was concussed out there. Now, there's protocols in place. There's a reason we go through the whole concussion protocol. Now, if you take it upon yourself to second mind the already put in place, you're putting players in danger. That person should never work in any level of sports again. Because apparently 
winning the football game is more important than a player's safety. You just showed us that. Now you put to it now now you put in question your integrity, your judgment. Can I trust you to evaluate anybody? He really should lose his license. Because that's ridiculous. Because we seem to get demolished on that Sunday game. And then we turn around and four days later, it's not even a full week, y'all. We came from Sunday to Thursday. So first of all, he should never have played again. Second, it should have been in concussion protocol. Third, y'all played on Thursday. You didn't even give this man enough time to heal. Now you're put, you're, you're you're potentially putting him in a life threatening situation. On top of that, the NFL is culpable too because they have spotters that are in press boxes looking for players that are acting outside of the norm in every NFL game. Absolutely. But there's something about that head trainer saying that, oh, it wasn't a concussion. It was a back problem. You couldn't even diagnose it the correct way because you know if you would have said anything to do with the head, it would have automatically been concussion protocol. That was his loophole saying that it was his back. That's a loophole. Loopholes get people hurt. That gets careers ended. Look at what happened to RG3 and his knee injuries. He should never have been on the field. He clearly had tore his ACL, but yet it's a playoff game and we can't afford to not play him because we have no chance without him. So we're going to make the man play on a bad leg. And what did he do? He tore it again, but this time tore it all the way through and was absolutely never the same. These athletic trainers need to start putting the players first, the player safety first. That is your job, player safety. You don't work for the organization. Your job is the patient. You take the oath. You violated that oath. That's my thoughts on it. Malo. I think that he was a scapegoat because by and large, the head coach makes the call. The head coach would say, yeah, I'm not a medical professional. But you know, if you're a player, just got his bell rung, you know you need to go in concussion protocol, even if it is the bad, just to cover yourself as a head coach. So I think they fired that doctor because he was the scapegoat. He probably got a hell of a severance package. Oh, yeah. He probably already had his own private practice. So it's uh, the NFL does a good job at covering its own butt. And if the NFL sits up there and tries to point all the blame and all the fingers at the Miami Dolphins and their training staff, then the NFL isn't doing their job what they settled in a lawsuit for. To have spotters at every game, to evaluate players, even when the team isn't evaluating players. Supposed to be an automatic trigger that it hits his head or has a violent collision with another player, they go in the concussion protocol so they're clear to come back. They got to take the whole training thing, they have to take that whole part away from the team. Yep, it has to be a unionized system of doctors that look after the players. Because when you're in a union, you're protected. And a lot of these doctors don't be feeling protected. Like this one, he 
fired, right? The mm-hmm. Miami Dolphins fired him. They should have a union of doctors that look after these players on Sunday and throughout the week to make sure that we are putting player safety first. They have to take it away from the organization because now that organization is putting pressure on him. Hey, we need him to play. I think um, it's a conflict I, of interest. I heard it somewhere. It might have been on ESPN or Fox Sports, and they were talking to a doctor. <clears throat> and he was a former team doctor, and I can't remember his name, but I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. I normally remember um, who was saying what. But this particular doctor was saying that Monday through Thursday, that they're not playing, those are players. On Sunday, they're patients. And if he has to go, hey, he got to come out, he's performing his job. He's not at a game watching the game. He's at his office looking at his patients. And I think if we have that mindset or if the the medical team has that mindset, then we should be fine going forward. We give players a lot of grief about, well, they didn't consult the team doctor when they had surgery and all this other stuff. Well, you see why. I was one of the ones that was talking so much shit about um, the kid out of um, New Orleans. Um, what's the wide receiver? Mike? I can't think of the wide receiver name. Nah, of course I can't oh, think Mike of Thomas? Name. Mike Thomas. I was talking so much shit why he didn't have surgery. Maybe he didn't trust the team doctors. Maybe he had a concussion and they put him back in the game and he don't trust the team. These are things that are a problem for the NFL because if you can't trust the coach, you can't trust the team doctors, you're putting your life in jeopardy when you go play on Sunday. And I don't want to hear all this stuff about, well, it's a violent game and we expect, nobody expects to die. Nobody expects to be Merrill Hodge. And, I, I, and again, Google Merrill Hodge. Merrill Hodge was a very good analyst on ESPN. His career ended not because he had a knee injury, not because of anything that you would normally associate with a player ending his career. His career ended because he was with Kansas City after he had left uh, Pittsburgh. He could not find his way to the stadium. He had to call his wife to figure out how to get to the stadium because concussions had ravaged his body. That's how bad it can get. You got players that, after their playing days, are killing themselves because they've had so many concussions. We can't, we can't do this. We just can't. Rest in peace, Julius say, uh, one of, and, you know, he was somebody that I really respected the way they played the game. I had the pleasure I'm old enough to say that I saw Junior say I'll play football. That was the way it should be played. He played with a controlled aggression, but it was devastating. Devastating so much that he played with concussions and never even told anybody. Like I was just saying, my coach said, if your head ain't hurting at the end of the day, you ain't hit nobody. But that ain't something that you really account for when you're on defense. You don't think about the fact that you when you when you play an outside linebacker, you are banging every play. You come out, you bang it. Outside linebacker, linebackers hit. You got one job, linebackers hit. That's what we was told. Because I played the same position Julian Seau played. Outside linebacker, you hit. I don't care what's going on. You hit somebody, you hit the tight end, you hit the running back, if they leave, you block your way, you hit that fullback. It don't matter. You hit me. Over time, and you think about it, think about the amount of hits you take. You start playing football seven, eight years old. He retired at 37 years old. That is 30 years. I'm <laughs> banging. Think about what you're doing in your head. Here's what uh, I found interesting. A lot of people don't understand that there are players that will have their bell rung, go out and perform well after their bell rung. 
if you do something over and over again, your body becomes conditioned to do those things. You are trained to be able to perform without thinking. So it is not unreasonable for a player to have a concussion, go out and play a excellent game. And then two days later, you can't turn the light on. You got headaches. Oh, it's just, it's just a little headache. Take, 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 take two weeks, and hydrate. And you'll be all right. I was told that on the sideline. They gave me Excedrin on the sideline because my head was hurt. I had a concussion. Little league participation is down 39% because mothers see this happen on Sundays. And they're like, nope, these paid professionals with professional doctors. Ain't no professional doctor at the little league field. They know this. There are other opportunities for young kids to do other things. I am happy, and I don't want to live vicariously through my six-year-old. When my six-year-old told me he wanted to be a programmer, I didn't even get mad. For what? There is a whole host of things I might not ever have to worry about. But he, he's still going to play basketball, tennis, soccer, and hockey. I'm sorry, buddy. You're going to go through the whole gamut. We're going to be well-rounded just in case you got a crossover or a jump shot. But I digress. I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time you saw us on the podcast, in the beginning of the podcast, I was torn down. I was berated. I, you know, I don't even know, like, I don't even know how to describe what happened to me, TP. It was, it was a massacre. Like, Marlo felt some type of way. And he let it all be known. All of it. I was like, oh, wow. Dude, where the feel? Like, Really feel some type of way. And, you know, I get it. I, I, I get it. I, I get it. I, I truly understand. Robert, Stop it. Y'all Robert. quit playing. Quit okay. playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Malo got everything off his chest about him and his Buccaneers and them beating the New Orleans Saints and how my Ravens was trash. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I understand. It was it was a rough eight minutes. I I even posted it on TikTok. Go check it out. I lost a bet. I felt bad. I was bewildered. You should be down one eyebrow if it was up to me. See what I'm saying? Like I, I he should I almost, be down both of them because he wanted to make two bets. But, but see the thing about just win, baby. We we played them them Denver Broncos. I, that I, was cooked. That's what they said. I, I Al Junior. Wow. But you know what? We ain't regular. We went to the lab. We was like, you know what? We too flashy. We too glitzy. All this damn lights and cameras and shit in Vegas. We not this. We need to go back to Oakland. We was the Oakland Raiders. 37 rushes. 37. And we went throwing the ball to some dude nobody ain't never heard of before. I don't care if he averaged 19 yards a catch. He don't need to get the ball. So we need, no, Hollis. Hollis yeah, was Mac, getting Mac the, Hollins. You don't even know your player's name. I don't know this dude. I don't even know how this dude got on the team. This bitch stuck on the team bus. Why are we giving him the ball? Because he's open. 
We don't which need which is the way that it should be. My quarterback, throw it to the open man. Don't throw it to the other team. We had to. They had to like. It really wasn't working, TP. It wasn't working. They had to really sit down with Derek Carr and tell him, "Hey, if they're not wearing the same color as you, don't throw them the ball." That's Listen, what <laughs> TP. That's not how we are gonna win. We ain't got the offensive line for that. What our offensive yeah, line I do? Like yeah. Our offensive line slap people in the face. That's what we do. I had to listen to this dude for eight minutes because I know my squad good. I know we ain't trash. And I told y'all, didn't I tell y'all, before week five, the charges was going to be into reserve. And what happened? What happened? That quarterback, that quarterback's so scared to get a needle in his ribs right now. Like, he just said, you know what? I'm just I'm just gonna play with these hurt reels. Y'all ain't even got to shoot me up. I'm straight. The Chargers won though. The Chargers. I mean, they played, to... they, you know, they played the, the dumpster fire we got out here in Houston, but they won. They almost blew it. We definitely came back. But what I tell you, I told you it was gonna be a rat race in that AFC West with the Chiefs sitting on top. Everybody else chasing the Chiefs. I, I knew. Told you, I, I, I told knew. you what it was gonna be. So I knew we was gonna be. We, I knew it was gonna be second. I knew y'all that. are y'all are last. Y'all we are last. last right now. We yes, gonna end up yes. second. And I we and this is exactly second. what I said it was going to be. I said it was gonna be the Chiefs and then the Broncos and Chargers and then the Raiders in last place. Marlo, did I not say that? We are to beat the Broncos. We are to beat Mar the Broncos. Marlo, Marlo, did I not say that? Raiders are still last. You're one and three. That's, okay, don't that. worry about it. Don't worry about it. We got the formula now. We got the formula now. We got the formula now. Yeah, four yards and a cloud of dust football. I, I get it. That's not going to win you no playoff game, though. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. No, yes, it will. will. No, we'll be all right. Not in the AFC. Not in the AFC. Who y'all going to beat outside the AFC West like that? That's a playoff team. Y'all ain't going to beat the Jags like that. Ain't no playoff Y'all wouldn't even on, beat wait. the Jags whoa, 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 like whoa, 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 whoa. So... What we not gonna do is act like the Jazz got a juggernaut over there. They do not. Like they I don't said, too bad. They like don't I said, too bad. that AFC South is a toss up. Houston could win the AFC South. Nah. You keep saying that, but I seen y'all play tough. I seen y'all play tough. We played every game tough, but what we don't have is a coach that trusts his offense. Until Pep Hamilton decides, hey. I want to throw the ball over seven yards. We're we, we gonna keep losing. So this this right now, I'm saying Pep Hamilton, throw the ball. Y'all 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 gave the helm to David Mills. Davis Mills is, is QB one. Let him be QB one. Right now we 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 trying to play three yards and a cloud of the dozen. That shit ain't working. We have the number twenty seven ranked offense in the league. And that's because we refused to throw the ball downfield. We had a 22-3 lead on the Colts. We tied 20 to 20. We didn't score another point. All we had to do was score one point in the second half, and we'd have won that game. Uh, right now, fan update. The Broncos are up three zip on the Colts. And since we're talking about the Broncos, I I noticed an interesting stat with all these let Russ cook people. Geno Smith look better than Russ right now. And I don't know. I think Seattle might have came on top of that trade. Geno Smith at one time was the number one quarterback in the Big 12. Then he went to the NFL and got sucker punched. At one point, Geno Smith was top five quarterback in the nation in college football. His success does not surprise me because the Seahawks don't expect their quarterback to do a lot. And the ball off, give it to Penny. <laughs> he 
hit DK. It's really that simple. Wait a minute. Oh, and they brought in no offense, which was actually a good trade because now we see the Broncos minus a tight end, and it's just Judy and Cortland Sutton, and they have no chemistry with Russ. We don't see the chemistry yet, but offense is a timing thing, and it's early in the season, and the Broncos are two and two, so mm, I wouldn't sleep on them. Um. Geno Smith is the number 10th passer in the league. I just want to point out Derek Carr is number nine. Um, and Russell Wilson is number 16. Behind Matthew Stafford and Kyler Murray. Shout out to Kyler Murray. Time to talk. Got me winning my fantasy league in DK fantasy. Shout out to the time to talk. <sighs> Who has the Cardinals played? Nobody. They beat us on some bad coaching. I, like I that's the only reason. That's the only reason they beat y'all. Yes, yes. Okay. And okay. you're averaging three point six. You only need to do three point six three times. Ain't no reason to be in the shotgun. You already won the game. Just kick the field goal and go home. Our field goal kicker ain't. He ain't Justin Tucker, but he been damn good in the last two years. But again, our head coach is saying do the draft of Tim Tebow. So I'm going to have to like pray every Sunday. Apparently, I'm going to need to pray Monday night because I'm going to need him not to get into no ego match with, with Eric B. Enemy. And speaking of Eric B. Enemy, um, Every great offense coordinator to end up being a head coach ends up getting to a shot match with a star quarterback. Josh McDaniels, Andy Reid. Any time for Eric to be a head coach? Like, there's a dude in Denver that can't coach his way out of a paper bag. And somehow they got two wins in spite of their head coach. We gonna we 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 can't just blame the head coach because we have running backs that don't want to hold on to the ball. Two fumbles on the goal line, they would be three and one. Just remember that. <clears throat> so I just you know, whew. yeah, like we have so. As much as I want to say all these great things about the AFC West, there are two coaches in the AFC West, maybe three, that's in Las Vegas. That may be idiots. I don't know. Because I know Vegas had a running game last year and the year before. And all of a so, sudden, I, so, I had, so, so why are you not running the ball now? Oh, no. The last game. Against yeah, the Broncos, last game, the, against the Broncos, last... he was like, "Let's run the ball." We should have been running the ball the whole year. You know what oh, it? You know what it oh, is? Oh wait, you don't want to pay him. You don't want to pay him. That's what it is. No, you know, you, I'll tell you exactly what it is. They got these shiny new toys. You got Devontae Adams. <laughs> and Matt you, know, you know, you know, you know how us men are when we get our new toys. We want to play with them. Run the damn ball. It ain't this football. We 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 overcomplicated shit. You trying to reinvent the wheel? Y'all y'all got to wait. Y'all had success last year because Josh Jacobs told it that pill. Give Jacobs the ball and stop playing. Hit Darren Waller on third down when you need to. Give a get 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 a shot play here and there for Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro. But coming out and throwing the ball thirty five times a game. Y'all will be, this will be y'all only win if that's the yeah. game. No, we can't do that. So run, run the ball. If you can hear me, run the ball. Um. So something else significant happened this week. And first off, I want to send a shout out to the Kansas City Chief fans. For those that don't know, I do ride show on the weekends. And the Kansas City Chiefs came in town. They was nice and they was generous and it was like, hey, you know, 
hopefully we get a win. Wink, nah, I was like, oh, okay. I should have known something was up because the Kansas City Chiefs fans, like, it was a lot. We just had a hurricane. And it was a lot of Kansas City Chiefs fans. It was Kansas City. Kansas City Chiefs had fans from Canada. I'm like, wait, yo. And I'm having conversations about, you know, Canadian football, the Kansas City Chiefs and all that stuff. And I called my homeboy and I was like, hey, what's going on with the ticket? TP, I don't normally like to put my homeboy on the spot, but I'm going to go ahead and put him on the spot. He gave my homeboy brew tickets to the Kansas City Chiefs game because I know he ain't want me there talking shit about how the Buccaneers got ran on. TP, ran on. So it's some things that I ain't never said about the Kansas City Chiefs. I ain't never said the Kansas City Chiefs was three yards in a cloud of dust. But apparently, the Kansas City Chiefs was playing Oakland Radar football. Because they was like, we got we, we got this dude. How do you say that kid's name? Put put Pacheco Pacheco. Is that how you say his name? First off, two twenty, run a four three forty in light contact. Where they find him at? Penn State. Okay, uh, it ain't been a lot of good running backs to come out of Penn State. Like I ain't I ain't finna see here at like he John Carter was all of that. I ain't finna act like you said. That, say 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 that statement again. And then and like if I have not. What, seen wait, what, what 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 did you just say? Penn State running backs. I ain't seen a lot of them to come out of there. Kijana you Carter. ain't seen. Wait wait on, wait, 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 wait wait. Let me finish. No, Set no, going is good, no, but he's staying I, injured. Oh hell no! You said it ain't been no good running backs come out of Pitt. Where did Larry Johnson? Play football. Oh, at. You know what? I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna let that. Where does right. Saquon You're Barkley right. play football? At? I don't count Saquon. Yeah, let him stay healthy for a whole season. No, you said I ain't seen no good running backs come let, out. Let Larry Johnson was a monster for three years. Too Larry many carries. Johnson, let Larry Larry Johnson is the last Division One running back to average eight yards a carry. Do you hear me? Eight, we no, we're not talking four or five yards a carry. This man averaged eight yards a carry. But that's here's a, but that's a first here's, down. That's three first downs every three carries. But here's what's insane, right? Here, here's what's insane. We have never said the Eric B. Enemy's offense is, is run base. This is a dude who ran for 2,000 yards at Colorado. But I guess he said, you know what? Every time we drop back against the books, they don't have to play but one coverage against us or one style against us. We're going to make them play honest. And the and Buccaneers. Another, it, the, the Chiefs offense is actually different, believe it or not. They're bigger. Yeah. Yeah. They're bigger. We can run the ball on the edges because now we don't have Tyree Hill trying to block corners. We have Juju Smith-Schuster and – <laughs> Ball there scantily. We have big guys on the outside who can block corners, which is now we got Pachenko on the edge, and now it starts. Now you see where I'm going with the, the theme here. You, you ever seen little roaches that be on their back and they be? It, it was a lot of Buccaneers on their back that night. I just, I ain't gonna call oh, it was no pancakes back. to go around. It was, it was ah, it was ah, and. <clears throat> You know, the Pyrite standard did his best. He did his absolute best to try and keep them into the game, in the game. But when you have a team that can run and throw whenever they feel like it, and a dude who can just be like, I don't see your whole defense. I'm going to do a pirouette, shake and bake, and then throw it to my running back for a touchdown. But I don't think enough is said about – the way the Chiefs play defense, Legereus Sneed might be one of the top ten players in you the. You know what? I'm finna, I'm finna go here. I'm f- you know what? Legereus Sneed, that's a Pro Bowler. I've, I, I've watched a lot of football over the years, and the things that he's able to do, 
But if I was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I wouldn't be worried right now because they still were scoring. You're you know, going against Andy Reid early in the season. You're not pulling out all your defensive stops for him. You're not doing everything you can to beat him because it's still early. I'm, I, if I'm Tampa Bay, I'm like, okay, that's what the a, that's the AFC's best team. TP and we went toe to toe with them. They got out, they got out a little early. They had a nice lead, but they fought back. At the end of the day, who else playing like that in the NFC? Who the Eagles? Nah, they showed us they ain't ready. Look, hold on, TP, because you know what? It's <clears throat> the disrespect segment. Uh-oh. Here we go. Mike Evans. It's time it's time to talk about it. I money. Guaranteed contract. Got paid. Supposedly the Bucks. Best wide receiver. I money. He ain't running away from me. I money. He will get some contested check catches. It's- his, his name is his name he, is Mike Evans. Mike Evans has been known to get locked up from time to time against corners with speed and size. By who? And this was one of those games where he got locked up. And those new additions. And who? Wait, hold on. I want to know what dude on this podcast said. Put Julio Jones in bubble wrap until December. I'll wait. It's silent in Orlando this week. We had a whole nine minute die trial. It is was, silent in Orlando. In. What you mean, silent? Ain't no silent. First of all, we still got another bet. We have a better record than your team. Your team won eight games. And you over here beating your chest happy because another team had offensive struggle against the number one offense in the league. And you really going to sit up here and make it seem like you, you, Dostradamus, by being able to say, oh, your team, somebody's going to get hurt. Every team, somebody got hurt. No, 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 no. I know we're not talking about the Buccaneers going to win the Super Bowl eight years in a row, and, and you and, got lucky when Tom Brady showed up. We're not doing that. This was based lucky. on science. This was based on science. Every year. Every the year last four it. years, it, four Julio years. Jones did hurt. I'm talking about how many Julio years Jones. have we been doing the podcast? That's how long and, I've been saying the Buccaneers going to do, do, go, go to the Super okay. Bowl. Okay, but every year, on this podcast, when y'all got Julio, I said every year for the last four years, he's been hurt. Put him in bubble wrap. He was supposed to be the difference maker in Tennessee, and he was not because he was injured. He because wasn't he even practicing. He, was throwing to him. he wasn't even practicing. That's why the coach was pissed off at the beginning of the season, talking about if we could just oh, get all our players God. in practice. That's not his situation in Tampa. No, it's I, not his situation went, in Tampa. I his situation in Tampa, Tampa was he, he was at practice, but his very first play was beautiful. It was a 40-yard bomb, a strike by Tom Brady. What happened next? I'll wait. Put that dude in bubble wrap. Don't even mention his name. He shouldn't even be on the active roster until December. I want you to keep the same energy when when we get to the latter part of this season. Because you act like we at game 12 or 13 or 14. No, 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 no. You act like we at game 12 with all that. Dude, we won in three. I, absolutely. We Y'all won, won in three. three. And, we won in and, three. And we going to be all be right. Team that's not good. But they, they are what, number two in the division, number three in the division? Who? The Broncos is number two and number three in the division. They two and two. They they paid four games. Okay, they two and two. We won the three. Yeah, y'all suck. Right now, y'all just beat y'all just beat another team that stuck. And supposedly the best defense in the league got ran oh, on like okay. it was little league. Ran on. 
Wait a minute. I'm, 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 really I'm, I'm, I'm so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be the veil. I get money. Contract extension. I get money. Defense tackle. I get money. We I might really, have I really don't even. I, I really don't understand. Money. Like, that's exactly like Jeremy Corbyn. They wasn't doing his job. Money. They weren't running all outside. They was running up the guts. He's a three hundred and. Something pounder who's getting double teamed every play by other three hundred and some pounders. Oh, oh, okay. There are dudes that get double teamed, and it's you know what? We not doing this. You got all these know. excuses now. You got all you these act, excuses now. You but when like you had that nine minute nine didn't nine have a good... Because I want to bet. What, fans, what did you win? Fans, fans. What did you win? Fans. You still haven't even paid me for my vindicate. You know what? You are right. You are right. The only reason you haven't been paid yet is because they didn't have your goddamn bottle at the motherfucking Total Beer and Wine near your house. If they had a head, you would have got paid tonight. I'm just saying. What, what I'm trying to get, get my point across is every time we bet, I win. So I, th- I let's bet this week. No, we ain't betting this week. We ain't betting this week. And the only oh. reason we ain't betting this here's why we not betting this week. Here's why we not betting this week. If the Pyrite standard got beat by Kansas City, I don't know how we're going to do because, you know, our head coach might do something stupid. I I'm admit our head coach say, might do something stupid. I'm trying to build that. a bar. I'm trying to build a bar. Okay. And you're helping. All right. Keep that same energy when, when we play the Chargers. When we play the Chargers again, keep that same energy. They already done whoop y'all. Okay. And like I said, they're going to be on edge of reserve by week five. Guess what just happened? No Joey Bosa. No Bosa brother. The quarterback got into reels. I think and he it, just won. They okay. still won. And who did they beat? You know what? I'm not going to do this. I won't teach you to stay in the podcast. I'm not going to do this with you. We're going to move on. We we, we definitely going to move on. <laughs> you, 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 I really hope you keep this same energy when it comes down to game time. Since we, first, since we talk about first you, was, you was yelling, oh, the Saints going to do this. And say, I hadn't heard you mention the Saints in how many weeks? I said this on the last podcast. Maybe Jameis Winston don't belong in the NFL. Maybe putting faith in a Jimbo Fisher. That is, that was exactly what I said on this podcast. Did I not TV? What you said before. Before Before. that, I was like, oh, he's going to be fine. He's going to be the number one team in the the NFL. And then Jameis Winston, for some inexplicable reason, decided that, you know what? Since I can't get my running backs to hold on to the football, I'm going to be hero, which was not required. So, again, I called him on this podcast. Maybe he just 10 cup. Maybe he just don't belong on this, in this league. Maybe that once he got a shot to get a hole in one instead of laying up, he going to keep trying to get that hole in one. So, I did say that. I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong. And the fact that when he was a Seminole, Kind of gave me a little bit of faith, but in the back of life. my mind, in the back of my mind, I knew that motherfucker was a Jimbo Fisher quarterback, and you can't name me one Jimbo Fisher quarterback I, that lasted I, in the league. I just want to go on the record as saying the person who admits to being wrong the most on this podcast just so happens to start with the, the initials T.W. I also point out that. I admit when I'm wrong, some people just hang on to being wrong. Like it's a life jacket. It's it's a life jacket. But it's okay. We're going to move on. We definitely going to move on. But I just want all the fans to know, please understand, this had been building up through the hurricane because somebody spent nine minutes talking about their raggedy-ass Buccaneers. No, I was talking about winning the bet for nine minutes. So... That being said, do not worry. Do not worry. The Florida game is coming up. The Miami game is coming up. We can bet eyebrows, goddammit. 
And I don't even like that coach. Now Speaking you want to bet eyebrows. Speaking of which. Now I, you want to bet eyebrows because you, you conveniently think. How you lose weight for us? How you lose weight for us? Man, good. How you lose weight for us? You got NFL talent at wide receiver. I said it. I admitted I was wrong about the NFL talent. It is NFL yeah, talent at wide receiver. It is NFL talent at running example back. example of you being wrong. I can be wrong. I can be wrong. How are you, you that see? wrong about your own team? I'm that wrong. My low. Yeah. Milo, we, you, we just you we glaze it. over the fact we glaze over the fact that fam, you got ran off the field by Jackson State. What you mean? We glaze over. I did over not that. get on. I did not get on this show and say, "Oh yeah, none of our receivers is this, none of our receivers is that." If you said, and "I'm I sorry," told, was I the junior, one? Hold on, was answer. I the one sending out information outside of Tallahassee talking about they run great runoffs? They're good run blockers. Wait, what? But you just sat up here and said they NFL talent. That's not an NFL talent. NFL talent that show itself in the LSU game. I didn't say there was NFL talent when we played you, Duquesne. You, you just did said I? It. We you ran eight million NFL times against the receiver. You did I say NFL that when we played at running back? I just said that. We've you always had home, we've always NFL had we've Wait, always oh. had good running backs. We've always had good running backs. That has not ever been a problem at Florida State. The problem that we've had at Florida State over the last three years since this coach has got here is he's had no wide receivers that can run routes and take the top off. He's had one that can run a route, but nobody can take the top off. Or he's had one that can take the top off and nobody can run routes. Well, now we have a route run. We have a designated third down wide receiver. We have a quarterback that after three years, and for some inextricable reason, was the number two quarterback last year behind a dude whose knee was completely destroyed. So now we do have NFL talent on the offense. I now question what we have on – actually, I don't question the, the talent we have on defense because we got Bethune from – um. UCF, and he played a hell of a game. However, Wake Forest is not – Wake Forest don't have no disguise game. They ain't spreading you out and doing nothing funky. They are running right at you on delayed runs. The, if you remember the old Syracuse option, that little freeze option from back in the day, that's how their regular runs are. Their inside zone is like a beat or two. Wait for you to commit, and then the running back get the ball. I know this. TP know this. So if we know this, why wasn't the defense prepared for that? That's what won the game. It wasn't those timely Hail Mary throws that they was making. It was the ability to run and change the coverage on defense. So again, I say, you give this dude a contract extension. It is year three. My recollection was six and six was not good enough. This dude's career coaching number at Florida State is 400. And he lost the weight for us. And she stayed is still on the table. North Carolina is still on the table. Miami is still on the table. Uh, I don't feel Miami is going to be a threat because they have their own issues. But there are teams with NFL talent that are on the table. Not winning this division this year? That's a problem. There's no excuse for it. Because the LSU game exposed two things. One, you have talent. Two, you can't coach your way out of a paper bag. And I love Florida State. Absolutely love Florida State. Florida State changed my life. This dude on the other end of this line helped me get to Florida State to change my life. But 
I know the truth. I have to come on this podcast every the last three weeks going, yeah, we won. I don't know how we won, but we won. Because we have a very competent offensive coordinator. But every time we get in the red zone, this dude here want to be on the headset. Get your ass off the headset. Take his headset when we get in the red zone. Put some handcuffs on him. I don't care what you do. Get him out the way. And we'll beat Clemson. Because that boy ain't got the talent he used to have. And he never was never a head coach. And we realized that that defense that we thought was so great was just the players that they bought and paid for. Because what's going on with venerables, and hopefully I say his name right, in Oklahoma is a disgrace. So this year was the year Florida State could have took the ACC while nobody was looking. But that's just, you know, that's just me. That's just me. And for all FAMU fans, I am not taking shots at FAMU. Please understand, homecoming this year. I am not. I took a shot at the compliance officer who made y'all NFL-ready linebacker not be able to play. Don't do that. You just said I ain't say nothing about FAMU getting blasted by Jackson State. That sounds like a shot. (laughs) They got ran out the field. Shot sounds like. Marlo, Marlo, how many scholarship players are eligible to play for another week? What is it, 20? I think it's like 20, ain't it? I think we might have lost, we might have lost Marlo. Again, FAMU fans, I am not taking a shot at FAMU. My first real job I ever had in life was the gentleman at FAMU. So I am not taking shots. And I would be at homecoming. Wait one motherfucking minute. <laughs> so he breaking up. <laughs> he breaking up. He must be you must be close to home because you breaking up. Oh no. Yeah, Mo. While while Marlo is breaking up. TP, what's going on with your boy Antonio Brown? What about now? What, what's what's going on with your boy Antonio Brown, TP? <clears throat> First, Concussion do damage. We are seeing it firsthand. <laughs> First, he exposing all, himself. That's all. That's all I can say. The man clearly got his bell rung many a times. Thank you, Montez Murphy, for ruining this guy. Oh, man. I don't know what to say. You know, I don't know. I can't put myself in that situation, so I really can't really tell you what I'm looking at. Okay, so to catch my lord, Antonio Brown was at a hotel in Dubai uh, or Saudi Arabia, I mean, in Saudi Arabia. And first, he, he basically exposed his front and his back to pool goers. And then <clears throat> to add insult to injury, he photoshopped a picture of himself kissing Giselle. And then next week, Tom and Giselle got attorneys. <laughs> and all I can think oh, of sorry. was, <laughs> Jaleel was like, I didn't want this motherfucker in my house in the first place, and now look what he's doing. So, yeah, Tom, I, I get it. You want to win. This this dude, you ain't going to lose no money because she made more money than you, but. Yeah, we lost more, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it's, mm, I don't know. Antonio Brown is. Is a interesting cat, very very interesting cat. I want Marlo to hurry up and come back, but but TP since you're in Texas, there seems to be a controversy in Dallas. 
I actually don't live in Texas anymore. Oh, wait, you know what? My bad, my bad. But there is a controversy in Dallas. People talking crazy. Talking about... What's the controversy? It might be a court. Well, okay, so you know what? It's not people, it's Jerry. Jerry started this 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 nonsense. Jerry said it would be great to have a quarterback controversy with a quarterback that has not lost a start since he's been it's in great. Uh, it, it ain't one. Cause who how much how much they paid that? He got 84 guaranteed. If they cut him, it's an 89. Dead, $89 million dead cap money. Yeah. So, where the, where the controversy at? I'm just saying people are insinuating that Jerry's going to keep back on the pine for a little bit longer. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody insinuating that. Nobody. I, listen, Jerry was the one that started this by going, it would be good to have a quarterback controversy. He started this. Don't get mad because at me. I mean, you got two good quarterbacks, but that ain't the case. Hmm. Okay, so here's a hey, thought. Topic. Uh, here's a thought. Where, where, where did this come from, though? Jerry, it came from Jerry's mouth. And now, so they got the Rams and they got Philly. So let's just say that don't. How many games game. has Cooper Rush lost? As zero. Player? Zero. Five there's, and oh. there, there, There's your controversy. So, you don't have to say it. We can see it. I've been saying it for years. Dak Prescott is not good. That Prescott's last game, he threw for 100 yards and no touchdowns. By the one he got I've, I've been saying it for years. The man couldn't throw a rock in the ocean. So. And I am not, as a Raider fan, the biggest Amari Cooper defender. However, up until week 12, Omar is very, very, a very good wide receiver. 12 on, he, he started to do stuff that nobody can explain. He can't be found in games. He, he go hide out. But up to week 12, he's that guy. But, yeah. Oh, so... You know, I really wanted to start with this topic, but we spent we we spent a lot of time on on the NFL. What's going on with your boy Herschel Walker? The biggest political ass on the planet. <laughs> Did he think we wasn't gonna find out that he paid for an abortion? You think that's the only abortion he paid for? Like, why? Why? Oh no! I'm sorry, Malo, Malo, Malo. He he only has four kids that he admits to. There are two others that are out there. <laughs> you know yeah, his 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 gay son got on Instagram and Twitter and went ham and it exposed him to the lack of father he is. Oh. And, and how much he don't contribute to his mother and him. It is. Like, this This dude is the biggest piece of shit that's ever... I think he's worse, a bigger piece of shit than Donald Trump. And I say that because he's African-American. And he's, he is embodied principles that are not even conducive to this culture. Like, I have so many problems with this dude. And then you can't even get on TV and articulate your lie. Like, first you come out 
I'm finna sue, I'm filing a lawsuit tomorrow for defamation. And then the next day, the very next day you come out and say, oh yeah, um, everybody make mistakes. And what? It, you know what? Hold your breath for 30 minutes. Help everybody out. 30 minutes without taking a breath. Oh. And I do not condone suicide, but if you can achieve that, then you deserve to live. Oh, oh wow. Well, <laughs> this ass. Oh. He, makes, he makes us look so bad, bro. I, I would As agree. A, I would I would 100 percent agree. You get up then coon because you think, oh, you, you couldn't make it in the NFL. Even though you were probably one of the most dominating college running backs that that walked the face of the earth, but you couldn't even make it in the NFL playing for the Dallas Cowboys. So you went to bobsled. That's yeah. a clue that you are not mentally wrapped. Like you couldn't win nowhere else, bro. Come on, man. And now you want to go into politics because you have all these Christian values. Well, you got four kids that you claim from four different women and you paying for ab abortion. Well, you know, I ain't telling you to go to hell, but if you start digging and it start getting hot, you close to where I want you to oh okay all right so we're we gonna we're gonna lighten the mood up a little bit we're gonna lighten the mood up a little bit we're a little too hard a little too hard so tp we talk about a lot of strange stuff on this podcast but here's one that i never thought i would see as a trending topic, and while we was away, there was a fishing tournament scandal. Apparently in Cleveland, Ohio, two winners of all, That's the problem. That is the fucking problem. Oh, God. You said, and I quote, a fishing tournament in Cleveland, Ohio. Continue. All right, so it went down on September the 30th um, in the Lake Erie Walleye Trail Tournament. When Jacob Runyon and Chase Kaminsky, considered to be two of the best anglers in the sport, were blamed for weighing down at least one of their winning walleye fish. There is video they, out there. They, they put lead in them. There is video out there of the commissioner put, of the tournament cutting the fish open to find the lead weights. So there well, it in the, in the immortal words of Ricky Bobby, you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> and if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> what do you what, what do you mean? First all, there's, there's second, third, right? there's even four. Where it, are you in your life if you are putting lead and fish to win a fishing tournament? Like how saltwater fish. fish. Not saltwater fish, a fresh water fish. Water fish. How bad is your life that you are trying to cheat to win a walleye fishing tournament in Cleveland, Ohio? Oh, oh, there's money involved, Marlo. Yeah, there's I'm, money I'm involved. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. But if you are considered the best in your field, why are you cheating? You already sponsored. I'm telling, I'm telling, it's that hundreds of thousands. thousands. 
Hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much? How much money do you lose if you get caught cheating? All, All of it. it. All of it. All of it. Not what? Second place ain't bad. You getting a check. Third place ain't bad. Fourth ain't bad. You get money all the way up to what? Tim? You getting you get some money. money. So now you go from being in the money to being out the damn sport. Because now you're a cheater. What is your motivation? Like this is, this is, that is a horrible example. Now your kids, everybody you know, you can't even go back to your hometown and be like, you cheating, you a cheater. All them fish stories that you tell me about, I don't believe in them cheese now. I'll be right back. <laughs> None of them. And, and, and fans, to be fair, we all have gone fishing with a cheater, Marlo. But you, wait you, a minute. Wait, but you uh, overcome it. Wait you a overcome minute, it. Ninja. Wait one minute. I have never cheated in fishing. Ever. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take you back. Way back. To the weekend of July 4th of this year. When my friend said, we're going on a fishing trip. We're going to go on the boat. And I said, do I need to go get a pole? Because I can go to Dick's Sporting Goods and go get a pole for the trip. No, they got everything you need. We straight. <laughs> Said friend pulls up to the boat with his own tackle and first his own all, pole. First of all, you asked me a question if you needed to go get a fishing pole. Oh, I should have said, <laughs> should I? That's what the question should have been? The fishing pole that you would have gotten from Diggs would have been the same fishing pole that they had on the boat. I think I would have made sure that I got a high-end pole considering I kind of had this feeling you was going to come out there with a Shimano pole. I was like, hmm. All right, well, you know, everybody trying to be economical. Hey, first of all, a, Shin a Shimano pole isn't my most expensive reel or rig. So I bought I bought my light work. So you were admitting that you, you cheated and brought your own tackle while the rest of us was no, playing with I'm, playing I, with the generics I, on the boat. I did not cheat doing anything. I brought my own poles that I take with me every fishing trip I go on. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you have that. I'm, I'm gonna let you definitely let you have that. Everyone, I, I didn't even take my tackle box on the boat. I left it in my truck, <laughs> which I had way better tackle than they had on the boat. So, again, no, I like, use that shit. so speaking of fishing, because you know, fishing is the only thing you could describe the Chicago Bears offense this year. Wow, that. Because they ain't catching nothing. They ain't catching nothing. Justin That's Fields in four games this season has 471 yards, two touchdowns, and four interceptions with a QBR of 26. He has a total this season, he has a total of 34 completions in four games. And I would love to blame him for some of this, but you ain't got no offensive line. You ain't got no wide receivers. He ain't got no. Just whatever it is, he ain't got it. It's that dude that owe you money. He said, I ain't even got it. And you won't be mad because he ain't got it. I ain't got it, dog. You want to be mad because you see the stats that come across the bottom of the screen. Wait, 11 attempts. Uh, how you uh, 11 attempts in a football game? In a football game. 
And they won a game. I'm sorry. They won two games. Two games. And I think it was a lucky interception by Roquan Smith that beat the Texans. All that says to me is that they are doing a lot more with less than 90 of 90 percent of the other teams in the NFL. <clears throat> they have 700 this is insane. They have 709 yards rushing and 471 yards passing. And I ain't like, you know, no no brain surgeon. But um yeah. Seven yards per attempt. I'm sorry, per completion. Seven yards per completion. You ain't even throwing for first downs. You throwing it to the running back. And I want to, like, blame him. But some of this got to go on the coaching staff. You had a whole offseason to come up with an offense. And this is what you come up with. And if Justin Fields ain't him, bitch him. Who is he throwing to? And what is a better option than Justin Fields with the personnel they have? Anybody else is dead. Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. Anybody else? Options. Anybody else in that offense is dead. Let's not forget. I can't even say his name. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Anybody else in that offense is dead. Any other I'm, quarterback. I'm in Ross St. Brown's little brother is playing over them. So, oh man, like Darren Mooney is the leading receiver with eight receptions. Equiminius. Equiminius. Shout out to Saint the parents. St. Brown. That was Mr. Universe. I don't know if y'all know that. that yeah. Was, uh, their dad is a Hall of Fame bodybuilder. Oh, my and bad. Did, I don't have nothing else bad to say about your, your kids, sir. You have a wonderful day. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want no smoke with Mr. St. Brown. First of all, he don't know me. He don't even know where I ain't at. Hey, but I, want, I want zero I'm smoke. Not, hey, I'm, hey I'm not as, a, as, a, as a parent, as a parent, my son's caught touchdowns five minutes apart in real time. In different states. Hey. Good job, Mr. St. Brown. Yep, I don't I don't have no problem with you. You are a great parent. Moving right along. Fuck <laughs> him. Fuck. Fuck him. Ain't nobody scared of him. You ain't got your camera on either. Marlo is speaking for himself right now. For real. This is this he does not reflect. The thoughts and vision of Fat Mouth Sports. I just want to just put that out there. Those are his own thoughts. Fuck him. And the horse he rode in on. That's why. Everybody giving oh. shit about the damn St. Brown. What are you going to do? Pull up. Pull up. You might walk over here, but you're going to limp back. <laughs> I don't give a shit about you lifting weights. <laughs> Better for this little fucking lead. Don't go playing. All right, TV. Also, while we was gone, you know, some very important stuff happened. Um, and we kind of touched on it as the, as everything was going on. But Yankees. I need y'all to understand something. Six Dumb. million dollars. I wanted the nickels and dimes. Dumbest franchise in the fucking history of franchising. 
You could have given this man there it is. a contract extension, but you waited for him to go to arbitration. You gave him $25 million for this season. I Idiot. The scale at which he's going to get ranges from $270 million to $370 million. I don't I don't know who was who was thinking who was like he almost had a triple crown. I money. Every big home run that y'all needed to win games, he hit them. I money. Your team was so bad this year that it had not been for him, y'all would not have won the division. I money. Y'all almost lost it to the Rays. Your pitching still stinks. I, money. I don't know what y'all know, but what I know is his agent, his agent, one of them nasty dudes. His first conversation is going to be show me the money. And you're going to pay up. And the reason you're going to pay up. Is because this whole little run that nobody wants to talk about. See, Aaron Judge serves two purposes for the NF MLB. He gives y'all an opportunity <coughs> to try and push Barry Bonds out the door, but not really. It gives y'all an opportunity to whitewash. Is that is Aaron? Is, is. Is 63 is 62 73? No, not even. Close. But what are we talking and about? He was, what are we talking about? There are networks and, that act like Barry Bonds didn't build that shit. ESPN, MLB. This dude hit 73 home runs and they didn't pitch to him. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. We right. got, do y'all understand? We got people that are out here acting like they knew Barry Bonds was dirty, but they didn't say anything. You didn't say that because it benefited you financially. What was y'all going to talk about other than him? Oh, the year before the strike, when you celebrated Cal Ripken Jr. for showing up to work. Chicks did the long ball. I just want to say that Troy also speaks for himself and not the dogs and villains of the rest of the cast on Fat House. <laughs> I'm just saying, Barry Barnes, Sammy Sosa, and Mark McGuire. That was the time before y'all y'all forget that was a strike. Fans was mad. They didn't want to watch baseball. And y'all weren't talking about what maybe people was on steroids. No, y'all was talking about oh the ball was juiced. That's what y'all was saying. It was a different type of ball. And what I know about physiology, what I know about the steroid era was that steroids didn't make you stronger or faster. It helped you recover. It was a training supplement. Ain't no steroid in America gonna make you hit 73 home runs. You can say that bullshit for somebody that got a bridge to sell. I ain't going for it. I know I'm, I'm a hundred miles. I'm gonna kill, I'm a, I'm a kill that whole man. You take anybody, anybody, and get them steroid and line their ass up at the pitchers that the, at the home plate and have any any major league pitcher throw hundred mile an hour pitches at them 
and see how many they hit. First off, what you're not going to do is you're not going to have Randy Johnson standing six, seven at the mile and little old me with this little piece of wood in my hand talking about I'm going to swing this back. No, I'm going to go sit my behind back down where I belong, where it's safe at. I'm just That's saying. That's one. This, this is the era where Barry Bonds faced some of the best pitchers Absolutely. In, the, in, in the major league, and they did not pitch to him in fear of the ball going over the fence. It had nothing to do with steroids. And you know what? So I didn't want to do this because I like Aaron Judge. But what are the smallest MLB stadiums this year? Yankee. They got the, sh the shortest right field porch in the, in the league. Let these go out all the time. Progress field. Oh, look, Yankee Stadium in Tropicana Field. Bear was slapping home runs wherever it was. In McCulley Cove. Out the park. Oh, oh you, you're going to lay one up? Okay, go get that out the water. Not out the stands. Go get that out the water. But again, I, I, this wasn't to downgrade Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge had a hell of a season, and he served a purpose for MLB and the Yankees. But let's not get it twisted. All this celebrating, all this stuff in your chest at the mothership. It's not going to be a Yankee next year. Stop. They happy that they happy for him now. But they missed that opportunity. Now he jaded. <clears throat> yeah. Triple. He almost had a triple crown. Do you? Number one in home runs. Number one in RBIs. Number two, the, the AL record batting, home. batting average. Like, I feel like the only way they going to keep him if George Steinbrenner get out the grave and sign the check. That's the only way. That's the only way. This, this, like Marlo said, this deep in the round. Your, your squad was so trash. Y'all moved them to hitting leadoff with them. Hold on. I'm sorry. Hitting leadoff? Okay. That's your team. That's your team. What's my team? The Yankees. Now you give me? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First off, because I say my daddy raised. Mm -hmm. This is my daddy raised. I don't necessarily have a baseball team. I do not have a love affair with baseball. But you know what I have a love affair about? The New York Mets. I get money. They own to say, get the best players. I get money. Here go a blank check. I get money. New York Mets jumped out there. 10 game lead on everybody. I get money. The Atlanta Braves. No, they don't. They're playing money ball. I get money. Didn't they win the World Series last year? I get money. Somebody really, really need to explain to me how you have a 10-game lead with the number one payroll in the league and lose it to Atlanta. They got ran down like it was a track meet. Like they was running the 400 on the 300 mark and got ran down. The only thing missing was a chair curl flapping. Like, what are we doing here? What, what What's happening? Like New York Mets fans, how at your boy. Y'all can't be happy. How you go from top of the division to the wild card?
I just, you know, I, I, I just, some things that, you know, used to happen. You lose a lead like that, you know, people start having to sell their house, and pack up their desk. Y'all playing the Padres. The Padres, who they had to send one of their players away. Because he lied about his steroid use. And they made the playoffs. And it's fuck around the find out season. If your pitching ain't up to par, you're going to be home. Because the Padres got pitching. They're number five in the league in pitching. And they got hitters. How do you want it? You want a home run hitter? You want to hit for average? You want doubles? However you want it, they can hit it. Mm. I will say, yeah, it's my team. I'm just an interested observer. I am not, I cannot say I have a baseball team because they don't respect Barry Bonds. When Barry Bonds get in the Hall of Fame, I will have to seriously consider a baseball team. In the meantime, Y'all can keep celebrating ragged ass goddamn Cal Ripken Jr. Y'all forget he was a ray. I seen it. He was a bum. So, I just call it spade a spade. You don't get extra credit for showing up to work. That's all I'm saying. It's a little TV, baby. So we, we was talking about the Aaron Judd uh, 60 second home run. There is an offer out there right now for him to auction that ball for two million dollars. Two million dollars. A lot of money. Six million dollars. I wanted it nickels and dimes. Yep, I think you know if. If if he still have that ball right now, he is a dumbass. Because it ain't going to gain value right now. Years down the road, maybe. Right now, your initial offers is going to be as good as it's going to get. So if you think you're finna play long ball, wait for them to up the, up the bid, it, no. Ain't going to happen. I'll take that two million and run. Um, because, like, you can't have no friends. Like, I would be nice. I would tell Marlo, look, you need to go ahead and sell that ball before I rob you and make you sell it. You got a family to take care of. Sell the ball, take care of your family. It's just sensible. I ain't got to worry about TV. First first of all, first first of all, (laughs) this is me. You ain't got to tell me shit. <laughs> so I wouldn't even make it out of the stadium without, without a check. Well, how much you want for it? Yeah? Done. <laughs> Done. Everything from that moment forward is a positive in the bank account. Whether you make 20, 50, 30,000 dollars off of it, it's all positive in your bank account. There, there's a comedian. Oh. There's a comedian that says um, people pray for blessings all the time, and then God give you a blessing, and you don't take it, and God is screaming, "It's a blessing! It's a blessing!" People stupid. People stupid. Like y'all, y'all just better hope when I when I play them numbers on Saturday, like. God help Florida State if I hit the Mega Millions. Because I'm hitting the Mega Millions on Saturday. And on Thursday, we're going to have a new head coach. And then I'm going to take another 20 million and go over to FAMU and be like, what we need to do to clean this up? And then I'm going on a cruise. (laughs) 
Yeah, I'm going on a cruise. Leonardo DiCaprio style. And we're going to move along. Some of us like to live. Did, did you just say Leonardo DiCaprio style? Mm hmm. And that did not end well. What the fuck would you want to go on a cruise like that for? You, you see, not the cruise in the movie, it's real life cruise. I need I, you. The, the only cruise that I know of about Leonardo DiCaprio is the damn Titanic. Not 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 that cruise though. No, the ones he have in real life with the, the 20, the 20 bottles. First of all, why? I won't have 20 models. I'm gonna be very clear on that. I'm gonna have Jill Scott, Letty, no, not. Erica Badu. No, you're not. No, you're not. It's four hundred million dollars. Why I'm not? Because you're not gonna have those those three women on your boat. I'm trying to figure out why. I'm confused. I'm just saying, bro. I think, I think you know why. Uh, it's I, I mean, you think money gonna get them. What's understood ain't gotta be explained. <laughs> I'm just, hold on. I'm just having her come on the boat to sing happy birthday to me. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Ain't, ain't no way. Jill, Erica, Leslie, if y'all are hearing my voice, don't do it. That is a level know. of hate. Wow, that is a level of hate. Now, just... the, re the reason why I say, because like, conversations that was had in the past the borderline stalkerish so who knows what's how far offshore you're gonna be before you actually get the same happy birthday and the international waters if you go missing you just miss it big cap you can go ahead and cut this part you you can go ahead and cut this whole little thing <laughs> this thing went no, off the rails oh i'm just saying don't do it Oh, I already have four text messages. Oh. oh, anyway, move right along. Move right along. Oh, goodness. oh goodness. All right. So, also while we was gone, Phoenix Suns, DeAndre Aiden. Off your brand new contract extension. I get money. Playing a G League team. I get money. Y'all lose. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Not a G League team. The Australian Adele 36ers. They lose. At home. So for those that don't know, like before you really get into preseason, some of the warm-ups are international games because it's good for it's good for the community, the basketball community. They lost 134 to 124. And at some point, the starters decided that they wanted to go back in the game because the, the pride was on the line. Um and do what? Your pride should never let an Australian team beat you in basketball. So I don't care what you do the rest of this season. If we pick NBA games on this podcast, every game I'm picking against y'all. Because that just came down to heart. And I get you ain't playing like super stellar defense because you don't want nobody to get into the nothing. But even if you play Rucker Park ball, y'all supposed to beat them. Like, you lost by 33 points. 
I'm sorry. Their worst loss was a 33-point loss to Dallas Mavericks in Game 7. And this team is normally used to shooting from a shorter three-point line. Craig Randall went nine for 17 from three-point line. Maybe it's just me, but if the dude is willing to launch 17 threes and he hit nine, maybe I need to get out there on him. Just maybe. Just maybe. And y'all wonder how Dallas Mavericks beat them? They ain't got no heart. No heart. At least Draymond making sure his team got hard. He's swinging on people. What y'all doing having tea and crumpets? What's the little Australian beer that they drank? Y'all drinking that? Y'all kumbaya with your enemies? That was happening? Because that was ridiculous. And DK. Don't ban me. I know you ain't want me to talk about this. But we got to talk about it as sports. Like, this can't be your team. These your homeboys? Like, I don't know. It look, look kind of rough. Look, look real, real rough right now. But, hey. Whew. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Um. Malo, do we need to talk about your homeboy, Kyrie? Because we talked about Herschel Walker. And if we gave Herschel Walker that energy. We got to get Kyrie that same energy. Oh, Malo might be gone. TP, Kyrie. I was on mute, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say what I've been saying about Kyrie. If he is the best player on your team, you are not going to win. If you are counting on him to be anything other than a shooting guard, you're not going to win. He is not a point guard. For all the people that think, oh, Kyrie this, Kyrie that, Kyrie is a good scorer. He's not a distributor, never was. When he was on the Cavaliers with LeBron, who brought the ball up? LeBron. <laughs> Oh, he's a distributor of fake news because he retweeted Alex Jones' theory about the Sandy Hook massacre being a sham. This is the, the same guy who is currently in court in the damages phase after admitting that it was real. But Kyrie decided to you know what? Let me go ahead and retweet this because I'm all about the conspiracy. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who has been a statesman for the length of his career, gave, kind of gave Kyrie the business. He basically said, this is what happens when the education system fails. Kyrie is back to being more destructive, insensitive, and just plain silly than before. He making it look bad. That part. Did you know 37% of young African-American children are reading below grade level? 37% are reading below grade level. Now we're starting to see it with some of these adults. You probably wasn't reading too well when you was in school. Sports saved your life. He got into Duke. He there is there is an admission standard at Duke. Excuse me. He got into Duke. He got into Duke because he could not go straight to the league. Let's be honest. There's ways to get people into colleges 
if they know they only going to be there for a year. They was never expecting him to go on and be a scholar. That was never the plan for him. Oh, that's he, clear now. He 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 took he got hurt and didn't even play at Duke. Yep. Like let's be honest, he was the number one draft pick before he even went to college. He only went to college because that is the rule. That is the standard. Zion Williamson would have been the same way. If he could have went straight to the league, he would have. This guy. I don't. I, I. I don't think basketball takes the whole student athlete thing as serious as it is with football because you are required to be in school at least three years. Yeah. You got to be at least three years out of high school to go to the NFL. And I think in twenty twenty four they're gonna drop it down to eighteen again. So <clears throat> I just ain't nobody going. Ain't nobody Good night. <laughs> Good night. That's all I'm gonna say. Good night. Nobody's drafting eighteen year olds. Oh, they will. They will. Well, they, they they will based off of the ceiling. They say, "Oh, this kid has a high ceiling. We can we can take a chance on him in the third or fourth round. We're not really risking too much." And it's kids that are gonna declare for the draft that are nowhere near ready. Mm -hmm. We are going to see it. And you know why that's happening? NIL deals. Come on. We we get we we can take this back full circle. Now these colleges are having to pay players. They don't want to do it. Just send them to the league. I'm telling you that conversation was here. They just send them to the league. We don't want to pay, we don't want to pay these kids based off of nothing. You know. <clears throat> Better pay attention. TP, um, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I had a, a a pretty good week. The week Texas A and M lost, like that was the highlight. Oh, I did too. I did too. That that was a highlight. <clears throat> I, I I enjoy watching them lose. I'm not even gonna lie to you. The only I was an AM fan for four years of my life, and that's because my cousin went there. And then it was right back to the burnt orange. And you know, I came on the podcast and expressed how I felt. Cause It is doesn't go without saying. Jimbo Fisher <clears throat> got credit for a lot of stuff. Wow, Jimbo Fisher! You should never underestimate the predictability of stupidity. And I know that Jimbo was not what we thought he was and ain't what he think he is <clears throat> but i respect him get in my belly because I get money. he get the bag he has never won the west I get money. And I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I don't think they're going to be third place in, in the division. I think TP was right. I money. They might be fourth. I don't think they are better than Mississippi State. I <laughs> trying to tell you. I don't care about the preseason rankings, man. I try to tell you. Jimbo entire offense is predicated on the play of his quarterback. And he don't have a quarterback. That's a tough place to be in. 
That's a tough. That's it's a tough road when you can't count on your QB one in the SEC in a division where you can't run the ball. Because let's be honest, A and M ain't big enough to run the ball against Mississippi State, Ole Miss, or Arkansas. They are they 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 are turned one dimensional, and their one dimension don't work. I tried to tell you. <laughs> Hold on, let me check something because if it is, if the office line coach is who I think is, no, it's not. Okay. But it's from that same line. So Roddy um, Valeric is a um, Clint Trickett or Rick Trickett disciple. And for those who don't know who Rick, Rick Trickett is, Rick Trickett was an offensive line coach who has a Marine background. And he liked his offensive linemen. Lean, hostile, agile. When he got to Florida State, we had a five-star offensive tackle. Signed. Stayed with the class. And Mr. Trickett said, Son, you over 315 pounds. You cannot play for me. What? What the what? <clears throat> in that in that first. You know, but you know what that comes from, right? You ever watch Navy play? Mm-hmm. Where do you think Marines go to college? Same. Exactly. Yeah. Same. So when I look at Texas A&M, I'm reminded of that week that he said that. And at the time, I had conversations with Marlo about how the fact that I don't like the offense line coach, I don't like the head coach. Like, I just don't like Jimbo Fish. And I want all... But but now you look at it and he's gone, and now Florida State has a bigger O line, and, and we I run the football. football. Oh Man, my god! It is crazy how that works. You 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 bring that midshipman shit down here to the SEC. The little offensive linemen, and they're gonna get pounded. You can't run. You're not running the option. So why you need little little, little line? So look, the reason that they like their line is small. And uh, I'm tell you, I'm 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 a student of the game. I watch every. I watch different schemes, and I and I understand why that scheme is the way that it is. In the option type offense is actually a zone type blocking meaning. My right tackle ain't always going to be on that defensive end. His assignment might be the outside linebacker. You need somebody that's quick enough to get to the second level with this a read option because the quarterback has the ability pull it or run, right? That DN crashes down because he's unblocked. We're asking, we're not asking our right tackle to block DNs every play. We, some when, oh, when you run in a in, uh, what's that an inverted beer? Mm -hmm. You're telling your guys to leave the defensive linemen alone and go get linebackers. You have to be quick enough to get to those linebackers in order for that play to work. That don't work in the SEC. They're big and fast. That is why his scheme or his him as an offensive line coach isn't going to work. Not in the SEC. Take that shit to the big to the Big Ten or the Pac-12. That shit don't work. In the SEC, I'm telling you right now. So, um, it is that time, and again, we appreciate y'all coming out because I know last week, because of the storm, we definitely wasn't gonna have a podcast because my internet is spotty on a normal week, and that day, it was just insane. So we didn't have podcasts that week, but I do thank everybody for coming out. But it is that time. Of the week, where people can get stuff off their chest. I did not take nine minutes this week to get stuff off my chest like Marlo did last week. 
Malo, tell the people how you feel this week. Is he, is he there, Malo? I don't know what happened to Malo. We might have lost Malo. TP, tell me what's on your mind this week. I got to come all the way off of me, but. Pep Hamilton, talking to you, buddy. We are old. Three and one. A lot of winnable games out here. Why are we afraid to throw the ball? Why why have Brandon Cooks, Davis Mills, Nico, OJ Howard? Why have these weapons if we're not going to throw the ball downfield? You have conservatively conservative Conservative, conservatively got us out of every game that we could have won. Run, run, third and long, incomplete pass. It's like a broken record. I'm watching the game and I'm and I, and I'm I'm seeing it and I know what's coming. We're about to run stretch. Okay, that didn't work. All right, let's run a draw play. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, now it's third and eleven. Throw the ball downfield, we might win a game. Please, I'm begging you from the bottom of my heart. Throw the ball past 10 yards. As that just 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 throw the ball. We might do something. The defense can only hold water for so long. You know what they say? Pressure bust pipes. When you leave the defense on the field for an average of 37 minutes a game. We aren't going to be a good run defensive team. That's just the way numbers work. Get off the field. The defense can't get off the field because they always on the field. Offense get the ball, run three plays. Guess what? Defense right back out there. I'm shit. I be gassed. Playing defensive end in the NFL has to be a tiring job, as it is. And then we're asking you to be on the field for almost three quarters of the game. Yeah, we won't win too many games that way. That's just me having a little knowledge about football that I have. But Houston, Texas, we're going to be all right. We still building. I still love you. You see the Texas behind me. I ride. I have my horns up wherever I go. Keep working. We're going to get better. Every day, we get better and better. Oh. I think TP y'all like y'all got a shot to win the division. the The leader has two wins. Ain't nobody running away with that lead. All right. So, in um in this in this week we we had some rough times in Florida. Um, we had a hurricane hit, and here in Tampa, I was preparing um, myself and my family members and my son's mom's homes to be ready for the storm. Even though it didn't come, we wanted to be prepared. In that downtime, I was able to catch up on some documentaries and stories. <clears throat> and I caught up on a story that we talked about last year, but the complete report wasn't out. So we didn't get the chance to get into it real deep. And that is, the U.S. Soccer's investigation into the NWSL, which is the National Women's Soccer League. And so it was going to be bad because anytime you have to have a reporter interview the former commissioner of the league about an email that she claims she didn't see, but these young ladies decided to post on Twitter that not only did you receive it, there was a response to it. And these allegations, and I, I, you know what? I'm comfortable saying it, they're not even allegations. These atrocities were 
the coach of the Washington Spirit, coercing former players and attempting to coerce a current player into having sex with him. Verbal abuse at other teams of players. And ESPN did a very nice job of pointing out the inaccuracies of the statements of the commissioner, the actions of the owners, and the actions of the individuals responsible for these particular atrocities. Now, why is this a big deal? It was only a couple guys over a few years. We're talking about as far back as five years ago, 10 years ago. So now that's systemic. That means your entire soccer core is corrupt at its core. And I found something rather interesting that people say stuff without saying it, but you know what they're saying. So ESPN at the end of the documentary explains that the owner, the new owner of the Washington Spirit is a woman of color. They then go on to catalog four of the people accused of these atrocities are white, heterosexual men. So saying without saying, you don't have diversity in places of leadership which leads to a lack of transparency, which allows for abuse to take place. Because if everybody looks like you, acts like you and talk like you, you get away with things because your backgrounds are similar, your beliefs are similar, <clears throat> and nobody is able to say, hey, don't do that. So I noticed it. I was like, huh, how am I going to approach this? Do I want to approach it and saying that we got four white men running them up in the NWSL? Or do I say what it is? You have four white men running them up in the WSL, WSL and the people who are in place to stop it did nothing. Because one of the stories that came out was the coach that had got caught trying to coerce a player into sex was able to step down without any repercussions and then was given a recommendation for another job while the player who was sexually harassed was not working. See, as a man, I've had to go through a lot of stuff in my career. I've had to go through some racist stuff in my career. I've never had my career stopped because I would not have sex with somebody. It's never happened to me. It's never been a thing. To have somebody be in control of your career because you won't have sex with them is a level that is rape. And I don't care what, what you are, whatever you want to call it, it's rape. And there's no other way around it. Because if you don't have sex with him, you lose your career. If you do have sex with him, you lose your soul. But again, before this report came out, there was a lot of noise made about Serena Williams' husband buying one of those franchises. Why was that? Because they knew this report was coming. See, you got to watch out for the, the flim flam. A lot of these people do rollouts. And what are rollouts? Well, rappers do this thing where they'll go on these different shows and talk about stuff. They didn't tell you that there was an album coming out. 
but they done been on the Breakfast Club and eight other places, the Joe Budden podcast. So you know something is coming out. Didn't nobody know nothing about the NWSL. NWSL. We knew Serena had just played in the U.S. Open. Now her husband is on ESPN. We didn't even know what he looked like outside of a tennis stadium. Talking about he the owner of a women's soccer league? On the same network that just is, was about to air the scathing report on the NWSL? Nah, that's not going to cut it. They've made reforms. Things are different. But why we can't just admit that we got a problem instead of doing a rollout? This is a problem. This is what we're going to do to fix it. Quit blowing smoke up our ass. And again, I say, if we supported women's sports the way we should, a lot of this wouldn't even happen. Again, I want to thank everybody um, for coming out. Marlo, I think he might be might be nodding off on us. We we both started work early. TP TP is here. Um, I am not. Uh, well, sir, I was asking you for your take of the week before I started on my little diatribe. No, I didn't hear that. I have my daughter who's yeah, but no, I didn't hear it. Oh, so I will um I will definitely send you my little diatribe. So we got one more podcast before I turn 50. We're gonna do something special um for the next podcast. We got one more podcast before I turn 50. Um I, I depending on my mother's health, I'm I'm still feeling like Miami, Atlanta, Vegas is the move, but I'll, I'll, I'll see how I feel on that. I, I feel like we should go to Atlanta and get them living couple wings. I really, I feel like that. Uh, uh, uh. I just I like trying to go, trying to go Houston, Atlanta, Vegas. <laughs> Ooh. See, I, I Drake. <laughs> I just, you know, oof. See, Houston is my second favorite city. And Houston got a spot there that I don't need to go to anytime soon. Um, yeah, for those that know, know. For those that don't, we have previous podcasts that are on YouTube. You can check those clips out. Um, yeah, I just, you know, TP is from Houston, but apparently TP, there is, there is special events that go on and special clubs on Lent that we learned on this podcast here. This, yeah, I, I was unaware you should go on to the strip club on a religious holiday. Who knew? But only in Houston. Yeah. Just, yeah. And see how I eased out of that? See how I eased out of that? Nice and smooth, no ruffles. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out again. Good night. Have a safe evening. Good night. <laughs>